going on guys? Uh, if you've watched a lot of my previous videos, you'll know that I am a multi-species angler more than anything else. I don't go out there and target just one type of fish. Uh, basically something different every day. Keeps me busy, keeps me interested, right? Um, but I do have a strong preference to panfish. So panfish basically is going to be anything that fits into a frying pan. Right, so the most common uh, type of panfish here in North America, at least in the United States, is going to be the sunfish. So most people just refer to the sunfish, um, not realizing that sunfish is just more of a general term for a lot of different individual species of sunfish. All right? uh, I follow a lot of groups on the internet and I found that a lot of sunfish are actually misidentified and pretty commonly there's people asking what type of sunfish is this, right? Because they just go out to their local body of water, catch a little panfish, and they're not sure of what specific species it is. Alright, so the goal for this video is going to be to identify every single sunfish in the Lepomus genus, which is probably the most common uh, sunfish genus here in North America, right? So hopefully uh, by the time you're done with this, you're able to identify every fish, head off to your local body of water, catch a sunfish and know exactly what it is. All right, so hope you guys enjoy it and you learn a thing or two. All right, here it is. So the bluegill, which is probably the most common sunfish that you're going to encounter anywhere in the U.S., especially if you're on the uh, eastern side of the country. So first thing to identify uh, the bluegill, we're going to look at the upper flap, which we'll also look at to identify a lot of other sunfish. So for the, for the bluegill, it's usually fairly symmetrical and circular, and it's going to be solid black in color. After that, we'll look at the namesake of the bluegill. Uh, so it doesn't have blue gills, but uh, on the gill cover, all right, the blue gill does have a little tint of blue, usually kind of like a baby blue, sky blue sort of thing. Uh, definitely going to be more pronounced on some fish than others, but any blue gill should have at least a little bit of blue on there. Bluegill will also have these vertical bars along their body, and especially if they're uh, stressed out, they will become a little bit more pronounced. And actually, if you look at the, the second picture of the vertical bars, the entire fish looks a little bit different. It doesn't look like your typical bluegill that you saw in the first couple pictures. And that's because this one is a different subspecies. So same species, the copper nose bluegill. Uh, we'll talk about this one a little bit. Uh, most uh, pronounced feature, uh, the namesake, it's going to have a little copper nose or a copper band that you can see above the eye. All right, a little bit purple on the head. And then also if you look at the tail region, uh, the juvenile fish especially, they've got a red tail and a little very, very faint white tip, right? After the bluegill, we'll move on to the green sunfish. And probably the best way to identify the green sunfish is going to be with its uh, elongated body. It's got one of the longest bodies out of all the sunfish that we're going to talk about. Most sunfish are going to be fairly circular in shape. This one's definitely going to be uh, more oval, all right? Uh, also, on its fins, on the lower part of its body, they're either going to be orange-yellow, or they're going to at least have some sort of orange or yellow tips. Lastly, we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the area below the eyes on the green sunfish in the mouth region. Uh, many sunfish have this uh, turquoise teal, even kind of electric blue uh, bands and lines. The green sunfish does have them. They're going to be a little bit smaller and thinner though, and they're usually going to be uh, fairly broken up and irregular. So that's going to do it for the green sunfish. Uh, personally, I think it's one of the uglier sunfish species that we're going to talk about here. Pretty bland in color for the most part. From one of the ugliest to what I think is going to be one of the prettiest, all right, it's going to be the pumpkin seed. First thing we'll focus on, just like with the bluegill, is going to be the upper flap. All right. Again, fairly circular black, but this one's going to have a little bit of a white, uh, white outline around it, as well as a very distinctive red tip. Then just like the green sunfish, the pumpkin seed does have these electric blue lines on its mouth below its eyes. However, they're going to be a little bit thicker and a little bit more distinctive. They really pop out, and I think it gives the pumpkin seed uh, one of its prettiest features. Lastly, with the pumpkin seed, we'll talk about its namesake. So pumpkins, they're orange, and pumpkin seeds 
Uh, the sunfish, they have these orange spots all along their body. They kind of make up these irregular vertical bars as well. So they're not really in an irregular pattern. They're more so uh, up and down. Next we'll talk about a fish that I've seen misidentified as a pumpkin seed and vice versa a lot. It's going to be the orange spotted. And kind of from the name you can see where the misidentification would come from. Uh, the last thing I mentioned about the pumpkin seed is all these orange dots they have on their body. But the biggest difference is going to be the orange spotted. The dots are uh, way smaller, they are irregular, and they don't have nearly as many. Also a good way to identify the orange spotted compared to uh, the pumpkin seed and other sunfish, it's going to be the upper nuclear flap. All right, so again, black, but this time it has a white outline, and it doesn't have the same red tip that some of the other fish uh, had and are going to have, and that the pumpkin seed had. All right, from one spotted sunfish to the next, we're going to talk about the red spotted a little bit. Uh, unlike the orange spotted, it doesn't have irregular dots. Uh, basically on the red spotted, each individual scale uh, along its body looks like it has uh, little red dots and it usually has a kind of bl dark bluish grayish background. The red spotted fins, especially the, uh, the back of the dorsal and also the tail fin, they're going to have a little red tint to them as well. Keeping up with the spotted theme that we're going on here, uh, next we're going to talk about the spotted sunfish. Alright, so this one again has a darkish, grayish blue body, but instead of the red dots like the red spotted hat or the red scales, the spotted sunfish has uh, these black dots almost along its entire body on each individual scale. If you look at the mouth portion of the spotted, it also has this tri triangular area right where the uh, gill plate begins and a purplish, reddish, bluish kind of uh, color. Alright, we'll move on now to what I think personally is the most beautiful sunfish uh, in North America. Alright, it's going to be the long ear. I think it has amazing colors and it really just sticks out more than any of the other sunfish. So the first identifying mark is going to be its namesake. Uh, it's called the long ear, however if I was going to uh, give this fish a name I would call it the square ear. Uh, square ear. Um, most of the sunfish that we've talked about so far had circular or uh, oval flaps. All right, this long ear sunfish definitely has a elongated flap but it's also uh, more of a square shape. If the flap didn't give it away on the long ear uh, again, the electric blue, teal blue kind of bar is below its, below its eye on the mouth area. Most long ear sunfish will also have those. All right? And just a little side note, uh, currently the long ear is one, one species. However, there is talk in the uh, taxonomic community that the long ear will be broken up into several different species. All right? There is enough genetic variation in the different uh, current subspecies by location that scientists think they're going to be able to break these up into uh, many different species in the coming years. All right, after that we'll talk about the red breast sunfish, which again I think is one of the prettier, nicer looking uh, sunfish. Uh, first thing, the namesake. All right, red breast. They're usually going to have a red or orange uh, area around their breast, around their stomach area, right below the mouth. All right. Uh, after that, the, we're going to talk about the operlicular flap a little bit. And I mentioned the long ear should really be called the square ear, ear uh, mainly to me because the red, red breast sunfish, it has also an elongated flap. However, this one's going to be a little bit skinnier and a little bit more uh, circular and oval in shape. From the red breast to the red ear sunfish, First we'll talk about the flap again, and like a lot of the other fish that we've talked about, black flap with a very tip on the ear, if you will. However, the biggest difference here is going to be that the red ear sunfish, its entire body basically is a very bland color. There's not really too many other distinctive features. It should just look grayish, greenish with that red tip that really makes it pop out. 
The northern sunfish is actually a fish that I didn't even know was a separate species until earlier this year. And I think for a long time it was actually uh, classified as a long ear sunfish. So kind of a little bit of that talk again where the long ear is going to get broken up into different species. But basically for the northern, it looks very similar to the long ear. Its flap isn't as big and it does have these thinner uh, bars along its mouth area where the long ear usually had those uh, thicker bars that stuck out a little bit more were more pronounced. All right, the dollar sunfish, I'm guessing, I don't know this for a fact, but its namesake is most likely because of silver dollars. All right, the dollar is going to be a lot smaller than a lot of the other sunfish we've talked about, and it's kind of got a silver tint to it, all right? The upper flap on the dollar is going to be black with a white outline, uh, but unlike most of the other fish that we've talked about, there is no red tip. And if you notice, there's also going to be a little bit of white dots or irregular white lines on the actual black part of the flap. The bantam sunfish is actually another one of those sunfish that I didn't know existed until recently. And the main reason for this is because it's only found in such a small area compared to uh, how big the United States is, mainly in the kind of Arkansas area and very close to that. The best way I've been able to figure out uh, that this is a bantam sunfish and not anything else, one, it's going to be the size, similar to the dollar. This one is very small. Uh, it's actually even smaller than the dollar. It's the smallest species in this genus, but the mouth, uh, the lower jaw kind of protrudes a little bit past the upper. Uh, a lot of the other sunfish, actually all the other sunfish that we've talked about, uh, the, the two jaws are pretty much in sync in a straight line. Here the bottom's going to protrude out a little bit. All right, and then uh, the actual upper flap that we talked about on a lot of the fish, uh, very small, black, and really doesn't have much of an outline. And in some fish, it even blends in extremely well with the rest of its body where you can't really even see it too much. Finally, the last fish in the Lepomish genus that we are going to talk about is also what I think is the most misidentified and just people don't know what this one is. So it's going to be the warm mouth. All right, similar to the green sunfish, and it's actually often misidentified as a green sunfish or vice versa, it has an elongated body. The other fish we've talked about today, uh, mostly more circular, compact bodies. This one's going to be a little bit longer. Uh, next up, the second probably thing that I look at when I look at warm mouths, it's going to be the coloration of its body. Similar to the red ear sunfish, it's got more of a bland color compared to the other fish we talked about. Lots of kind of greenish, grayish, blackish. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of purple, but really not much that makes it pop out. And the upper liquor flap again, just solid black. Doesn't really have much, uh, much of a distinguishing feature. No red, no white on the tips, nothing like that. All right, so there it is. I hope you guys liked it, and I hope you learned uh, how to identify different sunfish, right? So you should be able now go to your local creek, pond, river, whatever it is, uh, catch whatever sunfish are in there and be able to properly identify them. All right, uh, best advice I could give is just do that, practice. Uh, go out there, catch a bunch of sunfish and then see if you could ID them. Uh, same thing, look online, look up a bunch of different sunfish pictures and see if you can figure out what kind of species it is. The more practice uh, you put into it, the more time you put into it, the better you'll get at IDing all these fish. All right, so hope you liked it. Uh, let me know down below what is your favorite sunfish species because there were a whole bunch in here that are really beautiful. My favorite, the long ear, right? Like I mentioned earlier. So I'll see you guys next time.